Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover three queries. These will include Query 27, Drive Level Latency, Query 28, I.O. Latency by File, and Query 29, which is I.O. Warnings. This series of videos is going to go through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, and SQL Managed Instance. The queries you see demonstrated in this video are very similar or identical to the queries for older versions, and the same concepts apply. Let's start with Query 27. This query reads from the SysDMIO Virtual File Stats DMF, which is documented right here. It also reads from the SysDMOS Volume Stats DMV, which is documented here. At a high level, this query simply shows the cumulative average latency at the logical drive level for all the SQL Server database files on the logical drive since SQL Server was last started. It is important to note that this includes all file activity, not just your regular SQL Server workload. That means that it includes things like database backups, index maintenance, running DBCC check DB, and any HADR related file activity. This also means that the latency numbers you see here will usually be higher than you see from other tools. Now let's run this query and see what it returns in more detail. As you can see, it returns a drive letter and a volume mount point for each drive that has any SQL Server database files. It also shows the cumulative average read latency, the cumulative average write latency, and the cumulative average overall latency for all the SQL Server database files on that logical drive since SQL Server was last started. These latency numbers are in milliseconds. Finally, it shows the average bytes per read, average bytes per write, and average bytes per transfer for all the SQL Server database files on those drives. This query is useful for identifying possible storage performance problems on any of the logical drives where you have any SQL Server database files. If you see high numbers here, meaning above 30 to 40 milliseconds, I would want to start to investigate further using the next two queries in this set to start to determine whether or not there is really a problem or not. Next we have query number 28, which is IO latency by file. This query reads from the SysDM IO Virtual File Stats DMF, which is documented here. You must pass in the database ID and the file ID from sys.masterfiles to the DMF since it won't accept nulls as parameters. This query shows you more complete latency information about each SQL Server database file on the current instance that you're connected to. These are cumulative average numbers since SQL Server was last started, and it's important to note that this also includes all file activity, not just your regular SQL Server workload. That means that it includes things like database backups, index maintenance, running DBCC check DB, and any HADR related file activity. This also means that the latency numbers you see here will usually be higher than you see from other tools. So now let's run this query and see what it shows in more detail. As you can see, it returns the database name, the average read latency in milliseconds, the average write latency in milliseconds, and the average I.O. latency in milliseconds, which is simply a measure of all reads and writes combined. Then it shows the file size in megabytes and the physical name of the file, which includes the complete path to the database file name. Then if we scroll to the right, we can see that it shows the type description and rows as a data file and log as a transaction log file. Then it shows you the IO stall read milliseconds and the number of reads, and then the IO stall write milliseconds and the number of writes, and then IO stalls and total IO, which is just reads and writes added up together. Finally, it shows you two columns on the far right that let you know whether or not Resource Governor is in place and throttling I.O. to these database files. So let's take a closer look at what this query is actually telling us about I.O. on my system. So if I scroll back over to the left, you can see there's a database called No Compression Test, and the average read latency is about 24 to 25 milliseconds, and that's quite a bit higher than any other files on the system. And I purposely slam that database with some big sequential reads to try to get those numbers up high like that. And you can see the write latency is extremely low for that database. 
And you can see things like how big the file size is and where the files are located. So if I saw this on a real server, I would want to start to look into what might be going on on that R drive. And I'd want to know what was behind the R drive, what kind of drives and what RAID level. And I wouldn't just go and wave this in the face of the SAN administrator and say, hey, your SAN is terrible. That's not the way to approach this. This is just one piece of evidence that you have slightly higher latency. And in this case, it's reads on data files for a particular database. And what I would also want to do before I went and talked to the SAN administrator is I don't want to look and see, is there anything I can do on the SQL Server side to reduce the number of reads? And maybe I can do things like use data compression to help reduce the number of reads from that database. And I can maybe do some query tuning or index tuning to reduce the number of reads against that database. So I don't want to do everything I could do on the SQL Server side, and then you have a better story to go talk to the SAN administrator when you've gathered all your evidence from SQL Server. Next, we'll take a look at query number 29, which is I.O. warnings. This is simply looking for any I.O. requests that take longer than 15 seconds, because when that happens, it goes into the SQL Server error log. And this query is going to look at the six most recent SQL Server error logs to see if that's ever been happening over the course of those error logs. And if you haven't recycled your error log or if SQL Server's been running for a long, long time, you might have to wait a few seconds for this query to come back. We'll go ahead and run this query and see what, if anything, comes back. And you want this to come back empty, to be honest. So when I run this on my system, it comes back with no results, which is what I expect since I've got really fast uh, storage on my system. But in real life, you might have some results come back from this. And if that happens, you want to take a look at the log date and then the log text, because that's going to show you when it happened. And it's also going to show you what database file on what drive that it happened to. And you want to see if there's any kind of a pattern there, because... If it's always happening at 3 a.m. when you're running DBCC check DB or running database backups, that tells you one thing. But if it's happening at lots of different times of the day with different database files, then that tells you something else, that you have more of a widespread problem with storage performance. And this is a lot harder for your storage admin to ignore when you see 15-second I.O. warnings. The previous two queries that we've covered in this video, a lot of times if you've got high numbers there, the storage admins will try to dismiss that. But if you have 15-second I.O. warnings here, that's a lot harder to ignore. This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.